This session is about documenting an existing database. And we'll start off this session by reverse engineering a live database. In that case, I'll go up to File, New, and select this second option to reverse engineer. This will prompt the reverse engineering wizard. And in this case, I want to use a native connection because I'm going to reverse engineer SQL Server. If I have one of the other main platforms like Oracle, Sybase ASE, or DB2 LUW or 390, I can choose those from the native dropdown as well. If there are any other platforms, I can use an ODBC, ODBC driver. So I'll have to give my login information. And then in this section, I'll decide what object types I want to reverse engineer and what databases and what owners I want to reverse engineer. So in this case, I'll just select a couple schemas, hit OK, and then for the sake of time, we'll just pull back user tables. But note, for SQL Server, you can pull back user views, triggers, procedures, synonyms, and uh, other objects here. Uh, these objects might be valid for other platforms as well. We'll continue through the wizard. In this step, we can actually pick and choose which tables we want to reverse engineer. In this next step, we can actually decide on some further options here. We can actually infer primary and foreign keys if there are none in the database. We can also infer domains, which would allow us to build a domain for each column that exists in the database. We can also choose a layout. And if you're reverse engineering a very large database, I would pick an, another layout besides hierarchical, which can slow down the reverse engineer process. You can always lay it out later as well. We'll get a summary here at the end, and then I can hit finish. So now we have a logical and a physical model that has been reverse engineered from SQL Server.